Okay, boys, welcome. Are you guys ready? I am going to talk to you guys while reviewing my own play. So, before we go over it, right? I know a lot of you guys know this already. So this not has to do with just Slayer. This is all entropy classes in general. A class, actually this is also including Hitmaster, like every single class. This is including supports too. When you play your class and then you have a certain build, you have to know which skill gives you paralysis immune and which skills give you push immune, which is super armor. We call it super armor. And the biggest one that everyone knows is obviously the space bar. If you press a space bar, you're immune. You're kind of shiny. And also some of the stuff that people don't know, if you press your space bar and right click push immune lasts a little shorter so if you actually press spacebar and let go the standing itself is a longer animation pvpers know this but you can use that to your advantage using spacebar to take immunity on getting stuns from the bar ground smash is the super armor skill that the slayer has right and then i have a bunch of paralysis immune skills which is spinning sword uh, brutal impact guillotine and volcano eruption the other skills that are there are not a paralysis immune at all. So if you get like tapped or something, the skill gets canceled. So this is very important for you to know which skills you have and which skills you don't. And the Z identity skill that I have for Slayer is also push immune. One thing I forgot to mention is if you transform, you're also push immune. You want purification rune on your skills that rotates fast. When he's doing a phase like this in the middle, any identity gauge gainers need to use their skill to build some meter here. Because ultimately, these orbs die within like any one sub skills. You see these pools? I bet most of you die because of these pools. Because they get stacked up, and then if you get hit by a bunch of them, while you're having a, a decrease in defense, you kind of die immediately. So whenever you kind of see green pools happening, it is very important for you to just dodge away. If I have just spammed my Z there because I was a DPS Goblino, I think I would have died. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys experienced this a lot as well. Remember the... The gate one, I said, don't touch the grass. I see it right here, this destroyer. He touched the grass. If the grass is going to be hit, I should have just pressed my bloody rush instead. If I had pressed my bloody rush, I, I wouldn't be get launched off, right? So then when you see this too, you got to save your space bar as well. But in this case, I had no space bar, I had nothing. And I pre-casted my brutal impact by not seeing the destroyer getting hit. The best way to figure it out is when you see this grass, and if you see a player on the front, just assume that someone's going to pop it. Because the range of this explosion is too big. You either have to push immunity it, or you probably have to use space bar or awakening or anything. This ring is very dangerous. The number one pattern, you're not supposed to get hit because if you get hit by this, you just gonna get grabbed and you can't do anything for such a long period of time. This is also including the 90 bar mechanic. So this particular gate one fight, closer you are, the better. Sometimes charm doesn't cleanse your mechanic debuff. You guys all say I use my charm, I use my charm, but they either use it too fast or they used it kind of like, it, it cleansed my other debuff. So that does happen. So it is important for you to, if you happen to bring a purify rune, it is important for you to just try and cleanse it yourself too. So Panacea is the guaranteed way to do it. Uh, we used to do Panacea as well, but they just do charm so that they can bring Atrophin. Because people want to bring Atrophin, right? If there is so many resets in long time ago for Korea, uh, we go, okay, let's bring, uh, let's bring Panacea instead. So in Lost Ark, if you're used to patterns, if you kind of know where the boss is going, pre-charge your skills. I, I bet most of you guys are kind of thinking about doing this already. Because there's no point of me walking up there behind them and then charge the brutal impact because no one grabbed them, right? He's going to turn around. So it's important for me to do it here. So Slayer specific, you're supposed to use Volcano Eruption for positioning because moving around is not, it's too slow. So whenever you can, you kind of use uh, using skills like Volcano Eruption and then jump to bosses back and then you start using other skills too. Someone that asked that, you know, what are the skill priorities for Slayer? is you're supposed to use guillotine first all the time because you can use guillotine twice within the uh, transformation if you have enough um, cooldown gems. And then you have like volcano eruption for positioning. You can use bloody rush anytime because you can only use it once anyway. Some people use bloody rush way too quickly, but it is good to keep bloody rush a little bit and just see how things are going to go and then use it. And the biggest mistake here up to this point is one thing. And I, and, I, and I remember when I was playing this, I didn't use my awakening in the beginning. <laughs> You're supposed to use awakenings at the beginning, okay? Because I, but I always forget because I'm old. I'm pretty sure you guys don't forget it either. Okay, so here, it is important for you to build meter and then move. Because it's, it's all the way out there, right? The orbs are not going to be close anytime soon. So I'm going to, I'm probably built some meter and then I move over. And if you position yourself like here, your one slash can destroy two orbs. 
but I'm pretty sure uh, most of you guys are doing this already. No one got hit by this attack. So he's gonna turn around and slash, right? So I use my Z key right away so that I don't get pushed away. Does that make sense? Even though it's not gonna be a back attack, if I get pushed away, like I need to get close to him again. So using a push immunity is very important. And some of them land in back attack too, which is nice. Try to use push immunity as like a very aggressive point and uh, it will go a very long way for you. If you stay close, this particular pattern, you'll never get hit. So being close to this guy is always the number one priority. This would be a very good example here of like the transformation thing. He got countered, right? He's groggy. I'm about to transform. I transform right away. I guillotine right away after the transformation. And then I use volcano eruption right away. If he happens to move a little bit front, I can position him, right? And then I'm going to wait a little bit and space bra away to see where I can use brutal impact, my bloody rush, and my furious claw. I'm waiting for it, right? So I, re I use the shorter one here. He might be doing something else, but I see him doing the stab move. So I use furious claw then, and I'm charging my brutal impact. And I land that too. And then afterwards, I'm waiting for my bloody rush here. Right? And as soon as I saw him land his spears down, he's going to do the Borpa spin attack, right? That's when you use Bloody Rush because what if he jumps away? I'm going to miss that thing completely. So these are the thought process you're supposed to have to land everything in. And if you do that, uh, you have a very high chance to get like Cruel Fighter because you're, that's, that's what the Slayer is supposed to do. You transform and you try to land everything in a full cycle. And after Bloody Rush, I'm going to use my Guillotine as well, right? And I used it here, right? So I landed everything. This is an example where I landed everything. And if I do that more times, that's a perfect cycle uh, per case. So that's when you feel good about yourself. Because some of you guys ask me, when do you feel good about yourself? And it's like, when do you think you had a good uptime? Because I always say things like, yo, my uptime was pretty good. My uptime was pretty good. To know that if you did a good uptime on Slayer or not, is when you landed everything that I just showed you during transformation because that is the maximum performance you can have within one transformation. All that skills plus one more guillotine. And while he's in the Borpa spin, don't just walk. If you're a slayer, your auto attack is really big. So for predator players, not punisher, you know how your predator auto attack gives you mana and stacks too, right? If you auto attack, hold your mouse button, your speed is exactly the same as Borpa spin. So you look at me here. I'm just keep spanning my normal attack, right? When you're transformed, that is. This is more of a predator tip. So you notice me here. He's going this way, and then he's going to the other way. If he's going this way anyway, you can stand a little front of him and charge your brutal impact. Like, let's say when you're transformed, right? You can charge your brutal impact. He's going to go in front of, him, front of you anyway. Hit that brutal impact, space bar in, and auto attack more. This is the number one DPS opportunity if you know how it works, okay? Like most people are scared. If you meet a player that doesn't attack during this phase, and if you attack, you beat them in DPS. It's very simple. Because you're attacking when they're not. So you see me doing the spinning sword here? Gathering meter. So always play aggressive in this pattern. Always play aggressive. It is very easy. If you get used to it, it's very easy. So sometimes, I don't know how many of you guys get caught right away when the spear drops. So... You know when the spear drops, sometimes it just lands on right on top of your head and you get petrified. Just like my guide on the gate one, after you dodge this land, and if you stand right, uh, right beside him in the center, you will never get hit by these green spears. And funny thing for Slayer is you don't even need to go close to this guy. You can just use Brutal Impact here and this will land on the other side and then we'll kill him. <laughs> and then what you can do is you can just stay in the middle and they just gain meter while you're killing these small bugs. You don't want to transform if you can't get a, a good hit on. So I move back, transform, and then use guillotine first. So this is another mistake that I just told you. So what you should do here, remember what I said about brutal impact, bloody rush, and furious call can be used a little bit later because you have enough time until your identity runs out, right? So here, I shouldn't have pressed the Brutal Impact right away, thinking as if I have enough time. I was supposed to wait a little bit. And, and if he, and if I saw him turn around, I can go around over and then use Brutal Impact. I could have used it here. But instead, I used Furious Claw, and then I used the Bloody Rush again, right? I didn't wait. So these are the stuff that you will notice as an Entropy player. You wait until he positions. Don't be like me. 
Wait until he looks at someone and then use your skills. I could have landed everything on the back if I just played a little better, right? But good thing I you good thing I landed my second guillotine there. You always want to start with guillotine because you can you can always land a second guillotine. You have enough time. You have like a second. This is a good example. So I got hit. Don't use your space bar and get grabbed by this. I think I've seen, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen people do that all the time. When you're on the floor and if you're safe, don't press the space bar. I mean, we actually, we talked about this on Braille too. Don't press space bar if it's not needed. A lot of people use space bar as an impulse just to get up faster, but sometimes being on the floor is okay. But sometimes when you're in the heat of battle, you, you tend to use the space bar like in an impulse thing. But when you're on the ground and if you're safe, you can save that space bar because he's, he's going to phase away anyway. Uh, and this one's very simple. So uh, most of you guys are doing this special nana, right? When you, got, when you have everything ready, you just do your full combo. If you're atrophinning, you awaken. And by the time the animation is about to land, you pop atrophin and then use your uh, guillotine and your other combinations. You, you won't be able to use two guillotines, but you get to squeeze the most out of your atrophin. So this is not like a DPS advice, but I don't know how many of you guys die here. The easiest way to do this is just think about it this way. You can, if you stay outside, when you see this text, just space bar in. The fish pool will never hurt you before your purification. The only time you will ever get hit is if someone put the fish pool on purpose or a little bit earlier than you. That's like the danger area. But as soon as you get purified, you can just go out. See, so see, so see this. So the reason why I got hit there is this guy stood, stood here, right? And then he activated a fish pool. And while I'm doing the attack, I got hit by his fish pool. All right, so I stay outside. See, I saw the text. I can just walk in. And then I walk out again. I see the text. I walk in. You see the fish pool? It's still spawning. Super slow. You will, you will be safe un unless some people are around you. So you can find like a spot that no one's there and then just do, just repeat the process. The more you move outside, you're just in a disadvantage. Just stay inside, wait for the, wait for the uh, debuff to stack up to six or seven, go outside right at the ring, right outside the ring. So you can just walk in, but you can also space bar in too if you're scared. But I walk in, it, like well, look how much time I have. I just walked in. <laughs> I just donk walk in and do DPS. <laughs> So, um, so I saw in chat the 1.5 cycle, right? You have, you have a super big advantage of having wild rush. Wild rush is a dash skill, right? So you can maneuver more. So you can actually like wild, like wild rush, wild rush, or like you can use space bar and then wild rush here to do a diamond step. So we call it diamond step. When you have a boss in the middle, you move this way, like a diamond to reach their back really quickly instead of walking like a circle. So you have a space bar. Then you can move over and then hit. And Brutal Impact also has a, a tripod where you can move over to. I used to use this. So when you space bar, and then you can move like that. That's the diamond step. But I, since I pre-positioned myself, I don't need to have that uh, tripod. I can just use a charge tripod and then do a little bit more damage. Yeah, that's the stylish play. I used to play like that too. Because I wasn't used to it. I wasn't used to uh, positioning with uh, Slayer. When I got better, I used uh, the charging one. So I use Bloody Rush here. He's doing the stabbing pattern, right? This is the stabbing pattern when you recognize it. I used the space bar to dodge away. And I stood still a little bit uh, doing the flash blade to check if it's me. If you see the stabbing pattern, you always have to check if it's you. And I think this, this is Saint, right? I think Saint was the aggro, right? So he stands in the front because he know he's the aggro. And since the aggro is kept uh, still, I can go to the back and do DPS. This is so important. The triple stab, if you're the aggro, you have to be in the front and stand still. Or you can attack from the front too if you want. The entropy player's number one issue is they don't know they're the aggro and they try to chase the ass and then the boss turns around and they're complaining that why is the boss always turning around? That's because he's aggro to you. When he's aggro to you, just do the damage on the front. That's okay. When the aggro is to you, especially in a con, you have to have the head still. It's not going to get you crew fighter to a fighter by keeping the head in the front. Okay, so that's cleared it. That was gate one.